Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to Lessons in Marketing Excellence Season 6. I'm Pooja Kawal. Two rounds done, one more to go. For this magnanimous marketing competition to reach its climax, we're at the CNBC TV 18 studio in Mumbai to pick our top three finalists that will move on to the next round from here. The semi-final case study comes from Hindustan Unilever's premium ice cream brand, Quality Wall's latest offering, Magnum. The ice cream market in India is highly fragmented, with as many as 85,000 local manufacturers. But the top 5-6 players still make up about 90% of the market. Magnum is one of the world's leading adult ice cream brands and is present in more than 35 countries globally. In 2013, after a successful test launch, the brand was launched in five cities in the country. The challenge for our team is to create a strategic action and calendar to grow the brand in year two. Growth plan to be in line with recommendations on the four P's product, promotion, place and price. Fifteen teams from India's premier institutes will vie for three spots at the grand finale of one of the biggest marketing competitions in the country. And on the panel that decides who moves to the next round is Anand Swami from CNBC TV 18. Geetu Varma, Executive Director for Foods and Refreshments from Hindustan Unilever and Sudhir Sitapati, Vice President for Refreshments, South Asia and Africa also from Hindustan Unilever. The first three teams to present to the jury today are Team Beasley Bab from Maika, Team Marketing Mavens from ISB Hyderabad and Team Soti from XLRI Jamshedpur. First up, Team Beasley Bab. Welcome team, you've got three minutes, ready? Your time starts now. So, according to the brief, our agenda is to develop an activation strategy encompassing the four P's to grow Magnum in year two. After conducting in-depth interviews, FGDs, studying the dessert culture and ice cream industry in India, we identified three key challenges. Brand relevance, brand salience and connectedness. Cumulatively, these lead to low emotional connect with the brand. Now, how should Magnum address these challenges? One, by emphasizing on being the ultimate authority on pleasure, whilst pampering the consumer with royal treatment. Two, increasing the number of relevant touch points. And three, leveraging the cultural capital advantage. The cultural capital concept is when an individual adopts elite practices of a different culture and ends up feeling sophisticated and thinking that they've moved up the social ladder. Through the trickle down of this concept, the product truth of Belgian chocolate will be communicated effectively and our RTB will become more acceptable to our experimental TG, who is an active pleasure seeker. The objective of our media plan is to initiate trials for Magnum and subsequently make them our core users. Therefore, at Priority, we need to increase our reach and the rate at which we talk to them. Our campaign commences from February 2015 with seasonal bursting and continuous for the remaining period, which will give us more occasions to keep the brand conversation alive. This media mix is effective because traditional media will make Magnum physically accessible to our TG, while digital will engage them in conversations consistently. Some of the campaigns which will build brand affinity are first the Magnum Opus Outlet, a standalone cafe where royal treatment meets the pleasure of eating a Magnum. Here, the customers have the freedom to experiment with their Magnums and customize them. Objective is to convert these customers of Magnum to influencers and brand ambassadors for the brand. Second, tie-ups with properties like Canvas Love Factory. As Indians, we instinctively associate Britain with royalty. So we get a British stand-up comedian in association with Magnum for a show at the factory. Third, we have a few in-cinema in advertising campaigns. Fourth, social media uh, conversations around pleasure and royalty, like Pleasure at Leisure, Being Belgian and Magnum, are aimed at keeping the consumer engaged at all digital platforms. Some of our future recommendations include introducing new flavors, launching in new, two new markets, developing a brand story, as well as a few product and packaging innovations, which we feel will move the non-core consumers to core consumers of Magnum. In summary, uh, these are the few uh, recommendations that we have for the two new markets. In summary, 
we look to build brand salience and relevance and grow the brand with an effective reach of at least 1.73 crores thank you so i want to understand you know for who is it relevant and who it is not and for those who it is not how are the actions that you're proposing will unlock that relevance um so uh, first i'll talk about the relevant uh, tg like we said it's clearly given in the case it's sec a plus pleasure seekers um with a bullseye uh, audience being uh, 27 year old females we the brand itself is relevant to all of them just we want to make sure that we are communicating effectively that we are the ultimate authority on pleasure which is why you should consume us the people to whom it is not relevant is clearly falls outside of our dg which is not sec a plus so we are saying that whoever comes in sec a plus 18 to 35 years of age the product is relevant to all of them you know our problem definition on magnum is people get very excited in the first year mm -hmm. and then they find it either too expensive or get a bit bored by the second year your marketing plan seems to be a kind of general first year marketing plan i don't kind of see the emphasis on what you're doing so special and different about the second year compared to the first year so um, one of the biggest things that we feel uh, is special about our marketing plan is the cultural capital concept So why wouldn't we do that in the first year itself why should what's the second year emphasis on your kind of plan the thing is we haven't done that already in the first year which is why we want to introduce that in the second year in our first year we focused more on uh, you know royalty giving the royalty treatment and we feel that our reason to believe which is the richness of the belgian chocolate and the vanilla pods uh, pods and you know all the ingredients that we've specified we should focus on that so that people learn to appreciate right now indian society say it swiss chocolate is being the best chocolate in the world when it's not true so we need to make them realize that the belgian chocolate the ingredients the product itself is the best product out there which is why they should come back and consume so as for the work that you did what do you think uh, what did you find was the biggest barrier for people to come back the second time was it the price was it the fact that it was not available uh was it the fact that they had forgotten about it and it wasn't salient so what was that one thing which was preventing people from coming back and how do you propose to solve for that everyone we spoke to remembers the product the issue that they are pointing out is one the price and even if it's even if they can afford it the issue that's coming up in their mind is that there's nothing special about it i don't understand why there's a hype around it what is calling back my what is what about magnum is calling me back so again, and that's that's yeah, where we want so to harp again, on this so for example like the campaign with karina kapoor and the selfie the selfie is a passe for our sec a plus audience it will work for say an sec a or b but the trends are changing so quickly that they don't relate to the idea of a selfie anymore so the point like she said is our communication needs to be more pertinent to them and at the touch points at the relevant touch points with that it's time for a short break on the other side two more teams make their presentation to the jury you're watching part 1 of the semi final round on lime 6 stay tuned associate sponsor frederick constant geneve Welcome back. You're watching part 1 of the semi-final episode on Line 6. Next up is team marketing mavens from ISB Hyderabad. Welcome team. You know the rules. 3 minutes to make your presentation and then a question and answer session with the jury. Are you ready? Yeah. Your time starts now. We conducted in-depth face-to-face -face interviews during the consumption of the product and followed this up with an online survey. The two most common responses were number 1, the product is overpriced. Most people explicitly compared it with Feast and hence were willing to pay only marginally higher than the price of Feast. Number 2, the taste of vanilla in Magnum is alien to their palate. From these responses and the survey results, we got the following insights. The awareness of the use of exotic ingredients makes consumers feel that it's fair to charge higher prices temptation inducing visual ads compel people to try a new product people like being associated with brands that have distinct personalities and that enhance their status approval by peers influences both trial and repeat purchase we divided our potential customers into four segments the chocoholics the transformers the occasional indulgers and the cocoa connoisseurs these are the key factors influencing their purchase decisions based on the consumer insights and the positioning strategies for each of these segments we have made a comprehensive 360 degree marketing mix for year 2 which is divided into four phases 
In phase 1, we focus on increasing awareness. We recommend introducing mini packs and launching TV, print and billboard, temptation inducing ads that focus solely on the exotic ingredients. To access the splurgers, we propose tying up with the top salons and spas to give free entry passes to the Magnum Pleasure Palaces located in select malls where customers can sample the product in a royal ambience. As an innovative distribution method, we propose a radical new idea of opening the very first premium ice cream drive through fitted with Belgium chocolate and vanilla bean fountains. In phase two, our focus is to tap into the Indian mindset of indulging in pleasure only as a reward. We recommend a city-centric social media contest, Magnum Shout After a Burnout. People will be asked to post group pictures of how they reward themselves by indulging in Magnum ice cream after a burnout. The five most popular entries will be rewarded with an exclusive Magnum party featuring the top DJs from the city. Radio and local print media will be used for promoting this contest. In phase three, we aim to provide a platform for customers to connect with the brand Magnum. The Made for Magnum social media campaign will aim at personifying the brand. People will be asked to post videos that show how they embody the spirit of Magnum and the best video will win a chocolate tour in Belgium. Also, we, rec we recommend product bundles during the festival season of India, which coincides with the off-season for ice cream sales. In the last phase, we recommend coming up with a special Valentine's Day offer of two Magnum ice creams bundled together to promote the concept of indulge in love with Magnum. TV and print media will be used to promote this offer. Additionally, we will introduce a new flavor to increase variety. With 2015 being a World Cup year, we want to leverage the cricket mania in our country with our Leisure with Pleasure campaign, where 20 lucky draw winners will get the chance to see the World Cup finals in an ultra-plush Magnum lounge. In conclusion, we have provided a holistic marketing solution based on the customer insights we gained to increase the penetration of Magnum ice cream. You know, the idea that you had on the workout it was a nice idea, but it just seemed very chirpy and cheerful. And we as a brand are sensual and indulgent. So it kind of seemed uh, disconnected in terms of positioning from where we are as a brand. Uh, so you mean uh, the Magnum shout after burnout? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so, yeah. so, uh, so, sir, we, uh, we feel that uh, the whole idea of Indian consumers uh, having that, uh, they want to reward themselves and they look at indulgence only as reward after they do something. Like that is what derives, gives them happiness and probably more of social acceptability. It's, it's like a more social culture. So we want to target this by saying that after you've had any sort of burnout, uh, if, if you've had a bad day at work or if you've only been tired or you know, you've been running along, traveling a lot, whenever you want to indulge or you want a break, then Magnum should be the first product that you think of. That is how we, we, we were looking at positioning it. Why do you think Magnum in the first year, when the first three months of launching it, wherever we launch it across the world, right. becomes intensely viral? Because all these problems exist even in the first three months, right? It's 85, they don't know it's Belgium chocolate. But there's like some incredible success we get in the first three, four months. And then it kind of peters off. So why do you think that success happens? Because these issues remain. So that um, probably uh, can be because of the promotions that are associated with the launch of the product. Like for example, if you see in Malaysia, they started the Magnum lounges, the Magnum cafes. So these these kind of things and also most of the audience in the West or more of the educated class, they understand these things. In India also, probably when they started, people wanted to just try it. But after they tried it, they, they thought that the taste is weird and then their direct comparison was with a 40... 40 buck product and that is what made them not buy it again that is why it probably went viral initially and after that it and also I think the initial audience or the initial people that actually buy your product are the connoisseurs who love chocolate and who are already aware of maybe the, uh, the fact that Belgian chocolate is something special. But after a point when, they, uh, when their sales die out, it's <coughs> that's when you start to have to educate all the rest of the population so that they start buying. So you probably won't see the petering down effect at that point. So Which is why we focus on awareness in our campaigns. Tell me, is the bigger opportunity for Magnum in year two? Uh, what you're recommending in terms of, you know, taking uh, taking a magnum after a burnout or, a, you know, after a tough day? Or is it trying to get a share of the dessert post-dinner occasion? Um, I think uh, tying into the fact, as, as they already mentioned, that the Indian psyche, the Indian mentality is that people don't, people are not really pleasure seekers. They are hardworking people who would like to reward themselves with something special. So I think that's what the uh, ad is uh, targeted at. So I don't know if we can actually position this product as an after dinner treat. But I think at the, at, at the current stage, we want to target it as a reward that they can, uh, they can give to themselves or as a gift that they can give to themselves.
I am taking the point forward, ma'am. I think uh, there there will come a time when a premium ice cream like Magnum can probably be uh, you know considered desert in homes, but this is not the right time. For it. I think I think it needs to penetrate further. People need to get used to taste and <coughs> liking it more, and then no, uh, it could. So, so now you're even if you see uh, the Cadbury uh, the Cadbury positioning of how it is evolved over a period of time initially, they also started this thing about uh, on some good occasion on some festival occasion and now if you see how they are positioning themselves it's like kuch meetha ho jaye after after dinner or something like this so this has happened after they've penetrated the market with that it's time for another short break on the other side team soti from xlri will present to the jury stay tuned associate sponsor frederick constant geneve Welcome back. You're watching the first semi-final episode on Line Six. Our final team for this episode is Team Soti from XLRI Jamshedpur. Welcome, team. You know the rules. Three minutes is all you've got. Your time starts now. After an encouraging, encouraging performance in year one, Magnum saw flat growth in year two. Marketing efforts in year two must focus on overcoming negative consumer perception and driving up trials and repurchases. Magnum is poised to develop. and gain a leadership position in the premium frozen novelties segment due to weak competition to understand purchase behavior and perception of consumers we conducted 26 in-depth interviews surveyed 174 respondents and created mind maps with 11 people based on willingness to pay for an ice cream and perceived premiumness of magnum we created four segments out of which we will target two the disillusioned have high willingness to pay but do not perceive the magnum as premium enough and the question marks have low willingness to pay coupled with a low perception of the magnum's premiumness the major customer insights were magnum is deemed too expensive by consumers due to a low perception of premiumness the disillusioned segment feels that the brand lacks prestige low variety acts as a deterrent people prefer ice creams as desserts after eating out and magnum is viewed as a choco bar which cannot be premium Our target group pursues luxury and premiumness and is immersed in the parlor culture due to the connotations of grandeur. Hence, Magnum needs to imbibe a set of core brand values: taste, premiumness, royalty, success, and satisfaction. Subjects of primary research connected premiumness with international standards and exotic ingredients, which Magnum could cater to with new limited edition variants. Dessert recipes printed on the inlay of the packaging can address the consumer's need for variety and create excitement. A bundled SKU pack launched during the festive season can help inculcate gifting and storing habits. A super premium standalone experience zone called the Magnum Palace with a wide range of activities offering customers delight would help build an aura. This would increase the prestige of Magnum ice cream, a phenomenon observed in extension of premium ice cream parlors. Retailing should be expanded to high-end restaurants, kiosks, and vending machines at corporate offices, airports, and premier colleges. Visual merchandising in modern trade should be laid emphasis on. General trade retailers should be incentivized through couponing based on sales volume. They can be encouraged to use a catchphrase like uh, uh, "like enjoy your Magnum." ATL ads should be used. Uh, ATL ads should make full use of pleasure ambassador Karina Kapoor's royalty, positioning her as a royal begum. Sales promotion like creative point of sale purchase displays such as Magnum POS stands, uh, product glorifiers, and attractive standees will encourage impulse purchases. BTL activations will help in consumer engagement and foster positive brand advocacy. For example, Royal Experience Zones, sampling facilities to establish uh, taste credentials, and partnering with synergistic events. A growth roadmap for Magnum's year two marketing strategy has also been developed. So tell me, out of these various recommendations you made, which is True. the one which will actually target the disillusion? Right, ma'am. So because the disillusion have a high willingness to pay, but a low image of uh, no, a low image perception of Magnum ice cream, we would actually go ahead with the Magnum Palace. It's a super luxury store, and it's kind of on the lines of. Uh, Uh, if i were to use an example it would be like the playboy mansion in a sense so people have their own version of what's going on in, in there but uh, and that will kind of translate to the actual product so, so uh, the point is we tried to actually map a person's uh, p- uh, willingness to pay as in uh, what is a person's perception of what an ice cream should cost i wasn't clear on why you chose the segment you chose because Correct. to me it seems mm-hmm. like the most difficult segment to target Uh, so, so if we can go, uh, if we can look at the. What are the criteria you use to, uh, so, to target? So uh, our uh, 
model is a two by two matrix which uh, has a willingness to pay for an ice cream. This is not just Magnum, willingness to pay for an ice cream on one of the axes. And the other axis has the premium perception of Magnum, the perceived premiumness. This is uh, translated from different uh, qualities like uh, taste, quality, uh, presentation, etc, etc. So, uh, trying to look at the disillusioned segment, these are people who are saying that they are willing to pay more than 85 rupees for an ice cream. But at the same time, they are saying that Magnum is not something that they perceive to be premium. Now, if that is happening, these are the guys who are actually going to other competitors and buying their ice cream at a premium which is priced above Magnum, but not coming and buying my product. These are the guys whom... I can actually target the best. If I look at the other two segments, which is which are far away from the ideal fit, uh, they have a low willingness to pay. If I'm actually targeting these guys... Why not do better among the ideal fit? You had a segment called ideal fit. Correct. Uh, so People are willing to pay and like Magnum. Why not kind of look at them? Because they must be the low-hanging fruit, no? Uh, so if you uh, go back to our uh, segmentation, even when it comes to the primary research, we saw that there were about 35 or 38 uh, people in the ideal fit, whereas we had about 60, more than 60 people in the uh, uh, disillusion segment. Now, these 30 people are already, so uh, when we went through the entire case, we know that Magnum has a certain number of trialists or a certain number of repeaters, and that is a very small number. Now, our belief is that uh, these ideal fits are the ones who are driving that already. How, how important is premium, premiumness in this whole uh, scheme of things so uh, it is very important uh, but then you need to check what premiumness is all about we've actually listed down what premiumness is all about to us mm. so uh, we've broken down premiumness into five parts so and when, you, when, when you do uh, you know uh, kiosks at offices does that lend itself to premiumness uh, it's a perception, sir. So, when you're talking about uh, uh, making it available exclusively in a certain place, that is not something we want to do because if you're, if let's say you say that I want to associate the place with my product and thus lend the premiumness factor or a novelty factor, then I'm saying that I'll only make it available, let's say, in a very high end modern retail outlet. Now, if I'm going to, if I'm a consumer and I'm going to go and, uh, you know, go out of my way, let's say, walk for 500 meters to a premium ice cream, uh, premium uh, modern retailer and buy my ice cream I might as well go to a parlor which is letting me sit down and have the whole experience the premiumness has to come with the whole association of the brand's image not the place it should be the ice cream that lends the whole premiumness factor not the place that it is being sold at okay thanks thank you team that's all we have for you today join us next week as three more teams present their marketing solutions on Magnum to the jury until then from the entire team many thanks for watching so our idea was based on their current consumer insight and we gave a lot of campaign ideas which they can build on for the next year. We've tried our best and you know we think we've done a good job so now it's up to the judges to sort of get us through. I think according to us we've done so far well but uh, I think you know uh, success is always relative so it just doesn't depend on how well we did it will also depend on how well the other teams do so and I think there's a lot of great teams here yeah. from great colleges uh, we are pretty confident we gave our best uh, we think they're impressed so let's see once the scores are out next week on line 6 watch the teams from I am Udaipur Maika and I am Indore make their pitch to the jury in the semi-final round will they manage to impress the jury <laughs>